Hello everybody. New satellite images just came in, showing us in detail the uplift that has been ongoing on the Reykjanes Peninsula since the beginning of August, and they suggest that the rate of uplift is increasing. Over a month ago, scientists visited the Aska caldera to conduct thorough measurements of the geothermal activity. The results showed no significant change, despite the area having risen a whopping 70 centimeters since August of 2021. Now on October 3rd, 2023, measurements from the equipment in the Aska caldera show uplift has been slowing down since the beginning of August, which coincidentally is exactly two years since it started. We can also add another volcanic system to our list of systems with increased activity, as the latest satellite images of the Torva Jökull caldera show 40 mm of uplift from June to August. Let's check out the details. The eruption by Lithrútur in the Fagradalsfjall system ended on August 5th, 2023. Not even a week after its end, uplift was being detected yet again under the Fagradarsfjall system, and has been ongoing since, now totaling 30 mm at the uplift center. The uplift center is under Mount Fagradarsfjall's northern slopes, but that doesn't mean an eruption will occur there, as we've yet to enter the intrusion stage where magma starts to advance up to the surface. Currently, Magma is accumulating at depths of around 10 kilometers, in a similar area to previous eruptions. Before the intrusion, which led to the previous eruption in Fagradalsfjall by Litli Rútur, land had risen by 40 mm over a four-month period. Now, in just two months, the uplift already totals 30 mm, and since it seems to be speeding up, our experts warn an intrusion could occur in as little as a few weeks. We'll speculate a bit about that later. On to Aska. For exactly two years, Aska had been experiencing uplift, but on its two-year anniversary, the uplift flatlined, or has slowed down considerably, but it had risen 70 centimeters during that two-year time span. During this time, there has never been any change in earthquake activity, except for one earthquake swarm a few kilometers east under a mountain called Herdebreith but it was caused by the ground deformation from the uplift. The cause of this recent change in Aska is unknown, but we've had one period like this since the uplift began back in 2021, as from January to May 2022, uplift slowed down a lot, but returned to its former rate and continued that way unhinged until now. This, combined with the fact that no significant change was detected in Aska's geothermal activity, could suggest that an eruption isn't as likely as we thought. Our experts suggest that this may also just be a slight setback due to the magma finding an empty pocket somewhere in the magma chamber. That released some pressure, so in the next few weeks the uplift could just resume like it did back in 2022. We'll just have to wait and see. Then there's Torva Jökull. Torva Jökull's caldera is the largest in Iceland, with a diameter of 18 kilometers, and within it is also Iceland's largest geothermal area, which covers pretty much the entire caldera, or 150 square kilometers. These are definitely impressive stats, and now this volcano is showing signs of increased activity, as data from NSAR images from the Copernicus constellation show that over a period of two months from June to August, the center of Torvajökull's caldera has been uplifted by 40 mm. There hasn't been any obvious increase in earthquake or geothermal activity alongside this uplift, but that could happen later, but our experts are keeping a close eye on this system. Torvajökull has produced 20 eruptions during the Holocene. But the weird thing about most of them, or 12, is that Torvajökull doesn't produce them on its own. It seems as the system needs some help sometimes, as these 12 eruptions are resisted by both the Hekla system and the Bárðarbunga system. The average length between eruptions is around 900 years, and all of the eruptions during the Holocene have been small. On to more speculative topics regarding the activity on the Reykjanes Peninsula. It's always fun to look back at previous eruptions to compare the activity back then to the current activity. 
Before the intrusion, which led to the previous eruption on July 10, 2023, uplift had been ongoing since April and continued up until the eruption started and totaled, as mentioned earlier, 40 mm. That took four months from the first uplift detection to one eruption. Unfortunately, I don't have details on uplift before the other two intrusions, which led to an eruption back in 2022 and 2021, so the sample size is pretty small here. But if the same process would repeat now, where we see four months of uplift before an intrusion, it could mean that sometime in December the Reykjanes Peninsula could start to shake again. But whether that intrusion will lead to an eruption or not is uncertain. But three out of four intrusions in the Faradarsfjall system have resulted in an eruption, which is a pretty good success rate. I just want to thank everyone who made it here. Definitely leave any speculations and questions in the comments. It's always fun to read them. Other than that, I just hope you enjoyed. I also hope to see most of you in the next video. And thanks for watching. <laughs>